Hi, my name is Derek Opitz and I'm a field application engineer for Vector. In today's video, I will show you how to debug the VectorCast harness with VxWorks 7. So I have a VectorCast environment here and I have it configured to run on VxWorks 7. So when I want to debug a test harness is possibly failing or is not giving me the correct results, what I can do is I can click on my test case, I can right click and I can say execute with debug. And I'm provided with two options. The first one is with coverage and without coverage. Typically, you're going to want to choose without coverage because you're not going to have the instrumentation points getting in the way of debugging the code that you want to, to debug. Um, but if you want to debug with coverage, we will provide that option as well. So I'm going to select without coverage. And it's going to pop up this debug screen. And I'm going to expand this out to make it a little wider. And the important things in here is the very bottom down here, it tells us where our executable location is that we want to debug. And it, and it tells us what our executable file name is right here. So we're going, to, um, we're going to need those here in a minute. But first of all, we're going to go to Wind River Workbench 4. Okay. And you can see that I have VxWorks Simulator running here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to connect a, to that simulator with this pull down menu up here. This, this is the target actions for the selected connection. I'm going to click the pull down and we're going to want to run debug a kernel task. The way that VectorCast works with VxWorks 7 is we build the harness into a downloadable kernel module. And then we download that kernel, or that kernel task, that, that DKM to the, a running VxWorks 7 operating system. Then we start execution, collect the results, code coverage and test results and that sort of thing, and then feed those back into VectorCast. So we want to take that harness that we built and we want to download that into the simulator that we're actually doing this test on. If you, we, we also support real-time processes or, or RTPs and so um, from VectorCast. And so if you're building your harness into an RTP, you would choose a second one. But for this one, we're going to do downloadable kernel modules. And so we're going to select the first one. So when we select it, we're provided with um, a couple of options. The entry point is going to always be main because that's what the name, that's what the entry point is inside of our harness. And we're going to want to select this attached debugger because we're going to want to attach the debugger to our DKM and debug it. And then we want to break at the entry point, which is main. And then down here is where we want to select our module to load. Occasionally you'll have some modules um, from previous loads that are stuck in this, in this, in this uh, menu or this uh, area here, and you'll want to remove those. And then you'll want to go find the one that we want to debug. And so to do that, we're going to come back down in here. And we're going to select the screen here and we're going to copy this part right here because this is where our harness is. Let's paste that in. And then if you hit the browse button, we can go find the other part of it that we want, which is the UUT underscore. Now there are two harness options here. There's UUT underscore INTE and UUT underscore INST. The INTE is the uninstrumented version of the harness and the INST is the instrumented version of the harness. For this particular um, task, we're going to do the INT, which is the uninstrumented. And if you notice, it matches up with what's in here, right? This says UUT underscore INT is the executable here. So we're going to go choose that one. We'll open it, click OK. It's in the module to load list, and now we can click on OK. So this is going to um, come in here. And it's going to eventually give us our debug prompt here. So you can see now we've got, we're connected to the VxWorks Simulator 1. We've got this kernel task here and it stopped at main. And then right here in the middle, we get this green bar here that says, hey, here's where we're stopped at. Okay. Now, typically at this point, you're going to want to set a breakpoint on your function under test, whatever function it is that, you, that, that you're debugging. There's a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way, I think, is to come into your VxWorks simulator here, type B space and the name of your function under test. In my case, the name of my function under test is just place order. So I'm going to type break under place order, and then that's going to set a breakpoint there. And then if I hit execution, we can see that we're now stopped in place order. 
we can double click on it here and it'll show up in our in our list here okay so you can see that we've called main we've called vcast s3 switch this is our call stack here and now we're in place order which is a function that we want to debug now i mentioned that typing break place order into your vx work shell is the easiest way i think to get a breakpoint Another option is you could have gone to file, open file, and you could go to, we could go back in here and find this path again right here. Type this in. And we could have come in to find the name of our unit under test. Unit under test is manager. And then the one with um, vcast, manager underscore vcast, is going to be the file that contains um, our break the uh, the function under test. We could have just opened this. We could have came in here and just double clicked on it here, and then double clicked on there. Like if we wanted to put a breakpoint right down here, under this, we could have set a breakpoint here and it would have showed up there too. So you can actually open the file that you want to debug, or you can just type the the symbol into the simulator. So now, typically, when you're inside of your function under test the place that you want to actually debug is actually your code. So VectorCast always puts its stuff at the very top. And you can see we started with this VCast internal start tag. And then we and then we end it with VCast internal end. So there's going to be two. There's going to be one for the VectorCast stuff. Then there's going to be another for the initial opening uh, bracket. So you want to look for the second VCast internal end. And then this starts the code that you want to actually debug. So then once we're inside of there, which and we can I've set a breakpoint right here, I can actually run to that breakpoint. And now I can start stepping through our code, do all the normal debugging stuff that we typically do, like step over, step over. The other thing to notice is that you can go to the variable tab up here on the right hand side. You can see all the parameters to your function and you can see any local data that's part of that function. So you get all of that data as well. And then you can debug it just like you normally would. Once you're done debugging, um, you just hit disconnect here and go and then close down workspace or just reduce workspace. And then now you're back into VectorCast and you can do whatever you need to do. Now, if you hit start debugger at this point, it's going to run the normal test case, um, the normal way that it does it, which is from the automated fashion through the command line. Um, or you can just hit cancel and it'll, it'll error out and go back to the thing. So either one you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. We're back to VectorCast. And now you can, if you want to debug it again, you can hit execute with debug again, or whatever you want to do now that you're back into VectorCast. So in this video, I've shown you how to debug the VectorCast harness with VxWorks 7. I hope this video was helpful. Please check out our other videos on our Vector YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.